Hello everyone, welcome back to another devlog of my game Project Giant Mech. It has been another two more constructive months of development. I'm also happy to say that I've decided a name for the game. I will share the name once I have the Steam page up, which is hopefully within the next two months. I have created some new vehicle models and some new features that will later help me in creating boss battles and cutscenes. I will explain those later in the video. For those that are new to the channel, I am Kamran Wali and I am solo developing my game Project Giant Mech which is a first person shooter game with inspiration from Doom Eternal and EDA5 games. I am trying to make the game fast paced as Doom Eternal and give giant mechs and enemies like EDA5. There will be campaigns, character customization, upgrades and weapon selection. Also Project Giant Mech is not the name of the game. I have come up with the name for the game and will announce it once I have the steam page up. If you guys want to know more about the playstyle of the game then I suggest you to check out my previous devlogs of the project so that you will get a better idea. I have modified and updated the aircraft carrier. Now there are parts and features of the ship that helps planes to take off and land. I needed these modifications because I needed to show how planes are brought up to the deck and how they are launched. Here is how it looks in the game which is still same like before but let me show you how the modified parts works. This is the elevator that goes up and down. This elevator helps planes to go up to the deck and down to the hangar. This is the jet blast deflector. This too goes up and down as well. It is needed for health and safety precautions. It helps to prevent anything or anyone behind the fighter jet to get blasted into the ocean. And finally this is the catapult. It goes forward and backward. It helps the planes to take off and land safely from and to the aircraft carrier. This is the new fighter jet that the military will use. I modeled it after the EA-18G fighter jets. Really like how it came out looking. Let me briefly explain the weapons that this jet powered beast will be using. It has two turrets which are the primary weapons and will shred anything that comes in front of it. It also has homing missiles which are the secondary weapons and will trail any locked on targets once fired. Finally, the fighter jet has a powerful weapon which is the mini nuclear missile. This weapon is only authorized to be fired at the alien mother ships. The military also guaranteed that these mini nuclear missiles will not explode without activation. So if the plane crashes, it will not set off a mini nuclear explosion. Just giving a little bit of story. At the moment, I have added the plane as a background prop for the command center. So when the player goes to the command center, they will be able to see the plane taking off and landing. I will later make this fighter jet a playable vehicle. There will be special aerial stages where the player have to use the plane to fight enemies. Let me briefly explain and show how the plane moves around in the background. It first starts by the elevator going down. Already you can see the plane waiting in the hangar to be picked up. Once the elevator has reached the bottom, the plane will move on top of the elevator. Then the elevator will start to move the plane up to the deck level. This part I really like because it looks really cool and makes the aircraft carrier feel a little bit more like the real one. The player can also see this mechanics from the command center as well. Once the plane is on the deck, it will start to move towards the runway from where it will take off. Once reaching the starting edge of the runway, the plane will slowly move and rotate till it faces the right way. Again, this can also be seen from the command center. So far, I have managed to do the fighter jet animation till this point. I will hopefully finish it up within the next two months. To achieve this animation, I'm using finite state machine which just makes it simple to do. Also, my finite state machine editor helps a lot by remembering which component does what and in turn helps in debugging as well. I'm also thinking about using this system in cutscenes and boss battles. Alright, now let's talk about the helicopter. This is the new transportation helicopter model. Its purpose is to move personnel to and from the battle zones. It has two turrets which is mainly used as a defensive means for clearing out the landing zone. This is how the transport helicopter looks in the game. Really like how the rotors rotate. So far I'm thinking about making this vehicle only available during cutscenes and loading scenes. 
Here's a concept I'm showing where the transporter can be used. For some stages, there could be a mini turret event when the stage starts. Basically, the player needs to use the transporter's turret to destroy anti-air enemies on the ground. Once the landing zone has been cleared up, only then the transporter will land and let out the player into the stage. I have not finalized adding this feature yet and will only add it once I have finished up adding other main features. Alright, so let me show you all the new loading scene with the transporters. This is the same system used for moving the fighter jet in the aircraft carrier. This loading scene will be shown when starting a mission because it will help to feel that the player is being transported to the battle zone. I'm also planning to add another loading scene where the fighter jets are taking off as well. Last time I finished making the winning conditions for the player and also showing the winning end screen. This time I have implemented defeated condition for the player. So when the player is defeated, a small animation will play out where the player falls to the ground. Then the mission failed message will be shown to the player. Finally, the defeated end screen will be shown. I really like how the defeated end screen came out looking, especially the blood tears dropping from the eye sockets. I use particle effect for all the moving and glowing parts in the defeated screen UI. Also, if you're defeated, then you will lose all the rewards from the stage. But I have made sure that mission success takes precedence over mission failed. This means that even if the player have been defeated but the final projectile from the player's weapon reaches the final target and destroys it, then in this case the player will still win the stage. I pondered about this condition a lot and decided to favor player win over player loss. I also was facing a bug with the game setting UI feature where the sliders would stop working after scene changes. This was really concerning because at the time it meant I could not have special UIs that would be needed throughout the game cycle. Fortunately, it was my own fault where I forgot to add a custom update script to the UI that would update the sliders. After adding the custom update script, this bug was fixed. Here is the bug report if any one of you are interested. Alright, that is it for this devlog. By next devlog, I will try to finish the features mentioned in this devlog and will also try to get the shop system and weapon equipping and swapping system done as well. Like always, I will try to fix any performance and bugs issues as well. Most importantly, I will finalize the game name and get the Steam page up. Once the Steam page is up, I will immediately share it here. I am very grateful that you all came so far into the video. Please like and subscribe, that will help me a lot with the YouTube algorithm. Tell me what you think about the progress of the game thus far in the comment section below. See you all in the next devlog. Take care and stay safe. Stay out.